In previous lectures, we defined an ideology as a more or less consistent set of beliefs concerning the purposes and scope of government. Any political ideology, whether it is liberalism, anarchism, communism, fascism, or some other ism, then poses two fundamental questions about government. One, why do we need government? Or what is the purpose of government? And two, how much authority should government have to fulfill its purpose? Or what should be the legitimate scope of government's authority? As we noted, an ideology does not just immediately advance to a consideration of these questions. The assumptions of the ideology concerning the purposes and scope of government are premised on an initial set of assumptions about human nature and a secondary set of assumptions about social life and social relationships. What is the nature of human beings? Why do they behave in the manner they do? Why do human beings live in political societies? What is the relationship of each member of society to one another or an individual to the larger community? Is there a system of class or privilege? In response to the first question, we may note three purposes of government. The oldest or original purpose of government is to maintain order. In the broad context of human history, this is the purpose that governments have always pursued. In the more narrow context of the American experience, it was an important motivation of the framers of the Constitution, many of whom were convinced in the wake of Shays' Rebellion that a stronger central government was required to maintain order. George Washington wrote, What security hath a man for his life and property? The second purpose of government, stated succinctly by Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence, is to secure individuals in their rights by nature. These first two purposes of government are frequently in fundamental conflict with one another. The more authority and ideology concedes to government to maintain order, the more individual rights and liberties tend to be restricted. The Jeffersonian purpose strongly implies that the authority of government must be severely restricted. Therefore, the greater the insistence that an ideology places on preserving individual rights and liberties, the less authority government has to maintain order. We will refer to this inherent tension between order and liberty as the original dilemma of government.